Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, our tribe found themselves in a terrifying new land, filled to the brim with this jungle biome. There are jungle trees as far as the eye can see, so we are quite likely to see quite a few more apes than we did in our previous island. And aside from that, after we tear our way through all of these jungle weeds, we're going to find that our ports in the north are blocked by thorns. Apparently what we need to do is find the roots that are hidden around the island. These little plants right here need to be destroyed. You can actually see that the roots of this plant seem to look a little bit like the thorns, so I guess that's how our tribe would understand that that's what they need to do. But aside from that, one of our very own creatures has been receiving visions from Solaris. So I'd imagine that as Rorasi settles down in this new land, she would probably start to feel new visions rise to the surface. Maybe right now, since everything is so overwhelming, it would even make her feel a little bit faint. So I wonder if her brother could lead her to a safer place? He's going to have to find a good place to set up his base of operations after all. We need somewhere for our tribe to return to, in case things ever get too rough out in the jungle. Luckily, there are quite a few healing plants in the area too, even one right by the ports that our tribe can see right away. So they know there will be some shelters in the darkness. It's just going to be tough for them to keep under their control. The fruits are something that Lionheart in particular would be very happy to see, because that means that he's going to be able to sustain his lifespan very easily. The more fruits, the better. That means he should never ever run out of medicine. And for that matter, I think he also smells one of his very favorite snacks off in the distance. Those delicious red fruits. And this one seems ready to harvest. So maybe he, timid little Lionheart, would be the very first one to take our first steps into this new island. The tables have turned. If we bring him over here, not only can he crack open this plant for us, but he should also be able to guide our tribe mates into this clearing. So let's have Rovanu start clearing out the weeds at least. That way it'll be even easier for our expectant mothers to make their nests. I guess we'll want to do the same for Dagger and Needle, the other side of the Bluebird family. They could probably act as the spearheads in this mission. With their big claws, I think they would probably be the best for swiping away the toughest of weeds. So Needle can scoot ahead of her father, and start carving out a pathway for everybody to take, then he should be able to jump up ahead and take care of the really thick jungle weeds, the ones that we can't walk through before we pick them up. That should make it so Rarasi can get to the clearing now. She can go over here, settle down her nest, and I wonder if somebody could make use of this stump? Who would be the most likely to take point right now, I wonder? Maybe just Dagger? Or perhaps Moonflower? Oh, she's probably looking for her stinky fruit trees, of course. But she does love to sing. So I bet she would really love to settle up on these stumps, because that'll give her a good way to let those songs fly. I wonder if that would even intrigue creatures like Takir, who I'm sure would love to start a family of his own. But he hasn't found the right creature yet. So maybe if he settles down on one of those stumps too, he could sing into the sky to impress Solaris, and maybe ask him to guide a creature to his side. You will have to find some little special trinkets to give to him though, and I know you already know that. But I did notice that we do have a couple of those regular oak trees around here. I mean, granted they are so surrounded by the jungle trees. I mean, we're probably going to have quite a few apes taking up residence by them as well. For that matter, this one seems to be in a little bit of a swampland, so I guess that means that our creatures could even catch the sleeping sickness. Oh, there are so many dangers on this island, and I'm sure that Honeydew is the least impressed, because if you've noticed, the abyss is back. The same abyss that had haunted our creatures in the savannah has returned to this island too. I wonder if he remembers the stories? I think he's from a similar line, right? 
It's been so long now, it's hard to remember who is exactly related to who. But I'm almost positive that some of his very, very old ancestors would have come from the savannah, since he does have the water body like Melody. But he can't really spend too much time worrying because he does have to find a good place for Illusion to set up her nest to. Luckily, she's much more easily able to get around this place thanks to her normal body. I feel like this would be the perfect place for her to set up her base of operations anyway, since it is so close to so many of these healing fruits. So since they're hoping to create a little line of healers, this would be the best place for them to do so. Oh honey too, it's going to be so hard for you to keep up with her because she is so quick. Well, go ahead and plop down your nest right next to one of these healing fruits. And we'll do our best to make sure that Honeydew is following. Because we do want to make sure that they can have a couple of babies after this too. She's getting so close to the end of her lifespan. And she knows that now is more important than ever to train her little brood of healers. They're going to have to keep the tribe safe after all. Let's bring Rovanu next to his sister. Just so he can make sure that she's okay. His dagger carves out more pathways with his daughter listening to the songs of Moonflower off in the distance. His heart honestly must be aching right now. Oh, look at this! We actually have a root out here too? Oh, I forgot about these. Oh, we may have finally found a place for you to bury your friend Leaf. Right next to the healing fruit as well. So it's almost like she's saying that his memory is going to live on forever. Now that she's brought his remains to a brand new island, he gets to experience the adventure even without being here with us. He's here in spirit though, that much is definitely for certain. Now I suppose if we bring Takir up this way, maybe we could even settle him down by these stinky fruit trees too. Now I'm very very leery because we don't know exactly which apes are going to spawn, and we don't know how close either. Apparently, the ape trees that we can interact with are the ones that could potentially spawn dangerous creatures around us. But we're not close enough to investigate them right now, so we'll just have to wait and see. That sets you up very close to the roots as well. So I wonder if Takir is going to be the first one to see if he can get rid of this for us. It does look very, very menacing with all of those thorns. It doesn't look like something that we want in our home base. So I suppose that would be reason enough for him to see what he can do with it. Oh, and it looks like our first little baby back here might be sick too. Yeah, that was one of the concerns with their family. Despite the fact that they do want to raise a little group of healers, they both have immunity gene F. So really, we'll just have to cross our fingers that one of their babies does manage to inherit that person out so they can keep everybody nice and healthy too. But it's good to see that their first baby at least has it in his inactive traits. And he also does have the big nose. So that means he should be able to help us smell very, very far off into the distance to see if there's any danger lurking about. Luckily right now, it doesn't seem like we have any apes to worry about. Granted, I'm sure they're spawning somewhere deep, deep in that jungle. But as long as they're not around our main base right now, we should be okay. So let's take a closer look at this baby first. He is actually super cute. And he has enough strength to at least protect his parents. And I like how he's capped Illusion's blue eyes. But what should we name him? Maybe something to go along with his father's theme? So how about Mango? That seems like a good fruity name for this baby. Little Mango will have to find a safe place to set up where he's not going to get anybody sick. Luckily, there aren't any bluebirds in our skies right now, so we might even be able to move Illusion a bit farther away from him. I'm just worried that if she catches his cold, she won't have the chance to have any more personal babies. So yeah, let's scoot her over here. We can have Honeydew breed with her. Oh, do not tell me that fertility is going to get in the way. That is always the biggest concern. I guess you're going to have to take one for the team here, Honeydew. Keep your little baby Mango safe, and hopefully not catch his cold. The Lionheart knows just how tricky that can be. Let's have him go ahead and gather up these red fruits, so he can offer them up to the baby. 
I think if he picks it one more time... Yeah, that'll just leave a one fruit left, so we won't have to worry about it growing back and munching on any of our babies. We're all in very, very close quarters right now, so we can't be too careful with the carnivorous plants. But let's see what Rarasi's baby looks like, too. Oh, he actually reminds me of his father. Oh, and with the water body, too. Ooh, that's interesting. That is something that I was not expecting to see on their baby. But it's very pretty, isn't it? He almost looks like a little shark. With sandy spots. Oh, he would be perfect for diving if we could only go into the water right now. But maybe the next island will have a good place for him to swim around instead. I think I actually will call him Shark. It kind of fits with his father's name in a way. It's very fierce. So we'll see if he ends up being just as hot-headed as his father was. Especially if it comes to any little thieves roaming around in the darkness. So we'll have to see if maybe Rarasi can let Ravanu know about those roots off in the distance. She can tell him about her visions now, to give him some sort of direction to go by. And for that matter, since our other side of the family is sitting so close, Needle and Dagger would probably hear about it too. So that would give them a reason to go charging off into the weeds as well, trying to pinpoint where all of these strange roots are located. So it looks like Takir can actually pick this up. I wanted to make sure since he's not exactly the strongest. And I know that the berry bushes are a different story. So this might be your one and only chance to ever knock down one of these plants. And I bet this would be a very interesting thing for Solaris. Maybe you can preserve some different parts of the plant. Ooh, it even gave us food and nesting material. Oh, I bet that's exactly what he's doing. He can put it out as some sort of offering. And then hopefully he can sit down on one of these stumps and call out for a potential partner. I would like him to pick up some of the stinky fruits, but first we'll definitely need to find him a buddy. I do see that root over here that Sunrose could pick up, so we'll have her do that first. And then we'll scoot her up this way, so hopefully on the next turn she can help him pick up the fruits that he so wants. I bet that Moonflower is also watching very, very closely. She would love to pick these up too. But she'll have Dagger trailing behind her, because he's not going to let her get too far away. Not like she could when she's singing those songs so loud. Hopefully that's not going to attract any unwanted attention. I suppose she could always bring an ape barreling in our direction. Ah, but we have more healing fruits off in the distance, good to see. So I guess we'll have them go that way. You can settle down by these stinky fruits, and we'll have Dagger join you up in the north. Along with Needle, of course. She's not going to sit out on this adventure. She'd love nothing more than to sing along too. Now thank goodness, it looks like this carnivorous fruit is also very, very friendly. So we can crack this open with Dagger, as Needle goes ahead and clears out a little bit more of that extra grass. Now I guess we could have Rarasi sit up here for now. She'll be close to her baby. She can clear more pathways. Though we should probably be mindful not to pick up all of the grass in this area. We need a couple of places to hide just in case things get a little bit hairy. Just in case one of the apes does decide to swoop in. And more specifically, the seeing ape. She knows the grass would be a great way for her little baby to hide away since he doesn't have the toxic body like she does. She might be safe from the seeing ape, but not many of our other creatures are. So Rovanu is going to have to pick a direction for his tribe to go off into. And since Dagger is going this way, maybe we should have our little bird branch veer off on this path, because I know there are some more of those roots off this way too. So somebody is going to have to brave all of those jungle trees. Oh my goodness, you are going to be walking straight through the heart of ape country. I have a feeling you're not going to get out of that one too easily. But let's scoot him on up here. We won't let him settle down by the sick baby, of course. Oh, but Sunrose, you're putting yourself in danger again too. She's already been sick once. 
but I think that Illusion could probably spare at least one of these healing fruits if you do end up catching the colds. Let's see... Oh, looks like she's okay. Everybody is okay, and we also have a purse now in the nest. Oh my goodness, the first purse now of Adam's quest. Now, unfortunately, she is sick too, so that means she didn't inherit her father's whole myelin immunity gene. We have one more chance to pass that with illusion, but this is still a cause for celebration. The purse now might just be what saves us in those tricky situations where the apes are following close behind, because if a creature purrs next to someone in their tribe, they'll get healed a little bit every single day. So that means that if we do end up using all of these healing fruits too, it would be quite the situation if we did because there are so many out there for us to use. But if for some reason a creature can't get to one of the healing fruits in time, they could always ask one of our very skilled healers to purr a little bit for them instead. So illusion studies have finally come through for us. The purse now is now ours to keep. And keeping along with the fruit theme, I think we'll name this little baby Apricot and she'll be testing out her own healing abilities before long. You must be very, very proud, Illusion. So I guess we'll have to scoot Mango somewhere else. Let's put him right here, next to all of these healing fruits, and we'll just check again to make sure that there aren't any bluebirds in our skies. Okay, thank goodness. It looks like we're all in the clear, so one last chance, Illusion. One last chance to hopefully have another good healing baby. And for that matter, one last chance for you to pass that whole myelin gene onto your babies too. If for some reason this baby doesn't have the home island immunity, I'm sure we could always find him another suitable partner. But Sunrose is also carrying it in her traits, so she just needs to find somebody nice to settle down with too. Let's have Rovanu clear out this weed for her. So maybe she can help him out? She can help him try to find the right pathway to take. They were beacon buddies after all, since they both look so similar. So of course they would want to work together. They are called beacons for a reason though. That means that that bright white fur is going to be very easy for apes to spot off in the darkness. But it looks like you guys are in the clear right now. So let's have Rovanu skip ahead and sniff around again. If they're moving in the darkness, I feel like we should probably have the smelling vision on, just so we can tell if we're stumbling into any sort of carnivorous plant. Or any sort of healing fruit. Oh, I think that one's kind of in a bad location though, because that means it's blocking us from getting through. And some of these roots on these trees are massive. They take up three separate tiles. So, I mean, we have to be really careful if we're going to go through these deep jungles because we might end up blocking ourselves in with one of the apes. For now, though, you can scoot over here. At least you know you're safe from the back with the trees wrapped around you. It's a nice place for them to stop and take a breather while the rest of the tribe starts gathering more food. Oh, Lionheart, you desperately need some medicine. Come on down here and take this one for us. That way you'll be all nice and fully healed again. Oh, you are going to be living your best life out here. I wonder where he's going to go, though? He's going to want to stick very close to his adopted mother's side, of course. And his brand new little brother, Shark. Oh, I get the feeling that Shark is going to be much less timid than Lionheart is. He's probably going to be raring for adventure. And raring to find some water to dip his toes in, too. So Lionheart might have quite a bit on his hands pretty soon. I suppose for now, we could bring Shark over in this direction. Maybe he could investigate these strange red plants. He's in a good location because Honeydew is still watching after him, but he's not next to any of the sick children. Honestly, he would probably prefer to stay on the side of the island anyway, since this is where all of the kids his age are so they could probably find some good games to play. Even if the babies are sick, I'm sure they would love to invent some new games together. I think we might have to ask Takir to come over here to pick up these fruits instead, which is just as well because I do want Dagger to spend a little bit more time with Moonflower. And I suppose that Takir could always use these fruits for his offering too. 
Go ahead and pick up a couple more. But leave just one of those extra fruits in there. So we don't have to worry about that one growing back either. And then we might want Needle to pick up the grass at least. That way we won't lose this thing all from the darkness. But Moonflower is getting very close to the end of her lifespan too. Dagger's probably starting to feel a little bit of deja vu in fact, since he met Harp when she was close to the end of her lifespan as well. And they always look so similar, they knew the same songs. I think he's going to see if maybe she would like to start a little family with him too. So the one thing we will definitely want to do is fix that eyesight situation. For a creature who looks so much like the seeing ape, she was very, very hard at seeing herself. So we don't want her babies to inherit that trait. Then we might as well place the stinky tail into her second slot. That way her babies will hopefully be a little bit more protected against the dangers of the jungle. So let's cross our fingers that you'll be able to start a family on this turn. There we go. Go ahead and place down your nest, right next to those stinky fruit trees. And we'll see if you can snag a couple for your baby as soon as we pass the day. I think we might actually be all out of turns now. Yeah, there's no more roots for us to dig over here. So on Illusion's very final day, let's cross our fingers that we'll see just one more purse now, baby. Oh no, no purse now, unfortunately. But at least this baby actually has the home island gene. Thank goodness. So they managed to have one baby who isn't sick. And she even has that digging paw too. Oh, she's the first of the babies to inherit her father's digging paw. So maybe instead of being a healer, she would be more like the grave diggers of Era's past. Perhaps as a nod to that side of the family, we could even name her after a type of gemstone. And with that pink fur of hers, I think I'm going to have to name her Rose Quartz. So we'll see if she can pick up where the grave diggers left off and hopefully guide all of the passing souls to their next lives. I suppose she's going to have to start with her mother first, but only once she's grown her second gem, so she can seek out all of those roots along the island and use them to her advantage. We are going to start running quite low on food though if we're not careful. We're already at 68 pieces, so we desperately need to find a good source of food. Honestly, I feel like that's where Takira is going to come in, and that's why he wants to send the alarms out to Solaris that he's looking for a partner of his own. So maybe it's time that we bring Barasi into the tall grass, leaving the stump open for Takira to jump high on top so he can start finally singing his songs too. He'll place down all of his different offerings, the red fruits, the roots of course, those strange blocking roots, and we'll see if that's enough to entice Solaris to give him a chance. Takir has always been the one to lay out all of these offerings for Solaris, but he's never actually received any of his blessings before. It's always been his other family members instead, so maybe this time will be different. But let's take a look at this little baby back here too. Oh, a very royal baby if I ever did see one. Look at those stripes. Oh, on the black fur. She is going to be so sneaky when she goes into the jungle tiles because the black fur helps them blend in with the jungle. She's nice and strong. She can dig up roots. Maybe she'll even be the next bluebird feather holder depending on how she proves herself when she's old enough to do so. I think in honor of all of the different singers that Dagger has known, he's going to name this little baby Cadence. And I guess for now, we're going to give her father time to get to know her, because I do want them to think about gathering up these stinky fruits, just so we have something to actually feed the babies. So on some of your final days here, go ahead and pick up your very favorite snack. We'll have Dagger lick off those juices so we don't attract any attention from the apes. Though honestly, so far, it's been very, very quiet out here. I think next time what I'll do when we skip the day is I'll zoom out and watch all of the trees in the darkness. On our previous island, we could see little leaves fluttering around these trees when the apes were eating from them. So I guess that would probably be a good way for us to see if there are any apes out there at all 
and then we'll be able to gauge where exactly they're hiding, so we'll know not to go off in that direction. With so many different ape trees, I feel like it's very, very likely that we'll get ourselves surrounded if we're not careful. So let's see. Can you smell anything out here, Needle? There's some roots out that way. I wonder if she would get curious and start sneaking around. Oh my goodness, there's a permanent nest. Oh, somebody has already made a piece over here. Interesting. Why don't you settle down in this nest for now? Just so you can get a better view of the area? A berry bush! Oh, that's the first berry bush we've seen on this entire island! I haven't even seen any berry bushes in the clearings. Oh, we have to tell Takir about this. I think it was a normal berry bush, right? Even though it seems to be inside the swamplands, it's not curved like the poison berry bushes would be. So that should mean that anybody can pick from that, and we won't have to get special help from our creatures with the toxic body. Now, Lionheart, you better move away from all of these creatures, because you don't want to end up getting anybody sick again. We'll have you scoot off into the tall grass, too. Following rather close behind Needle, in fact. Hmm. I wonder what they would think of each other. I mean, Lionheart's timid ways have really been improving, so I don't think that he would be too weak for her. We do have to consider that this side of the family is focused on strength after all. Strength and conquering all the islands in their paths, so it's definitely not a root for the faint of heart. Now, how should we maneuver these babies so we can be sure that they're going to be safe? I suppose Shark can stay wherever he would like, though I really feel like he would probably hang toward the shores. Maybe we can have him make his own strange pathway around the outskirts of the island, if it's not going to be too difficult for him to get around, because those weeds are really, really thick. We probably just want to carve our pathways straight to the clearings to make this easier. Unfortunately, we haven't found any more of those roots that we can destroy yet, so I guess we'll head toward this one next. Maybe that's the one that Rovanu's sister saw, and that's why she sent them in this direction. So I think you're going to have to clear out this grass first, because it's some of that really thick stuff that we can't seem to walk our way through. You better clear out the grass behind you too. We don't need you guys getting stuck out here. And for that matter, if anything goes really, really wrong, you guys might end up needing some help. So we have to make sure that our pathways are accessible for our other creatures, especially those with the claws. So Mango has a second gem now. That means he can stray a little bit further away from the family too. So let's bring him out this way if we can. If we can find a way to get around all of his siblings, of course. I guess he's going to have to take the long route. I was hoping he could settle down inside some tall grass somewhere, so we could use that big nose of his to sniff around in the darkness. It almost seems like these weeds are like a barrier to him, though. It must be very, very strange, especially for somebody so young, to make sense of what he's sensing out in the jungle. This is where he could really use some help from his father. So let's have Honeydew jump high atop the stump, that way, he can maybe clear out a little bit of extra room for his babies to move around. You can have Apricot settle down right here. And then I suppose Shark could always spend some time by the new baby. That way, Rose Quartz doesn't get too afraid. Oh, and they both have the water body too. Oh, they are going to make the best of friends. I have a feeling that they're going to be very, very close. We should be out a lot of turns though. So where should we look to see if there are any little fruits being stolen from these trees? I guess I'll try to get as many in the shot as possible, but it's going to be very hard to watch them all at once. Do you see any fruits being eaten? I don't believe that I did. So unfortunately, the location of the apes is still a mystery. But our tribe is getting very, very close to their next clearing. And it looks like the apes aren't spawning around us at least. So I guess that means that we're safe for now. 
Hopefully in the next episode, our little beacon buddies will finally make it to this clearing where they can pick up more of the roots, they can pick more stinky fruits. The food is definitely going to be the most pressing concern going forward, especially as more babies are being born in the nest. But our tribe has survived food shortages before, so I'm sure it's nothing that they can't handle. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!